is Lenny Tweedin for This Is Our Story from Out of the Past. Today we're in the schoolroom in the Pioneer Museum. I'm going to visit with Helen Gould and uh, she's going to tell us about the history of the Fairmont Public Schools. And uh, Helen, tell us a little bit about yourself first. Okay, um, as you said, my name is Helen Gould and I, I'm born in Fairmont. I graduated from Fairmont High School. I've been serving on the Fairmont School Board for about 26 years. so. I have a very strong interest in our school system. And you should have pretty good knowledge about uh, public schools. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay, we're gonna take a look at some pictures. All right, some of the activities. The band has, has really been a, a, a very uh, excellent band over the years in Fairmont. And I see you have a picture there of the 1937 high school band. That's right, and Guy Donnelly was the band director at that time. Okay. Band has been important both to this, the students and to the community, so they've sure. been very supportive of that. And then in 1949, Dick Shear came and he was here for over 25 years, so the next picture is a 1975 band um, and developed a very... Yeah, he had a really illustrious career as a band director here in town, didn't he? Definitely. Al Zinter, or the choir, I mean, Al Zinter was here from 1964 to 1983 and mm -hmm. also uh, developed a very good program. Okay. And it looks like uh, some musical groups. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's Nellie's folk up there. It is Nellie's folk. They, they not only became kind of famous in, in Fairmont, Minnesota, but they became mm -hmm. famous uh, all over it. And that looks like a picture out of the past. Uh, a play? It is. It is a play. We had, we've had several excellent directors. One was Frank Plute, the first picture, and he's um, directing a uh, play there with Mike Pizer and Joan Anderson. That was, <laughs> but he was also took many many honors in the state with his groups, and then Bill Perrin was here in the seventies, and he too directed many many plays and the musicals were kind of a combination between he doing the directing and mm -hmm. and uh, Al Zinter doing the music part of it. Extracurriculars have always been done well here. Uh, see Coach Wolf and Potvin. <laughs> of course Herb Wolf is uh, well known to many. That's true. Herb Wolf has probably coached most everything that's ever been uh, coached mm -hmm. at Fairmont <laughs> over the years. In 1956 Tom Mahoney came to replace Dick Potvin. And of course, he had a long history here too with, with the football team. He was the football coach from 1956 until 1990. And we've had some state tournament teams in basketball. Right, boys basketball. The very first team that went to the state was in 1942. That was at the time uh, during the war years and there wasn't even annuals, but we were able to find this picture from the newspaper because they were the, a team that went to the state. And then in 1955, uh, another team went to the state and they were actually called the, the Sweethearts of the State Tournament. That was when we hmm. had all one school, sure. one size you know, competition. And they lost to Austin in the first game by one point and went on to win their other two games. And then again in 1990, Coach Hested took the team to the state. They, sure, I remember that team. They yeah, had, they had, had third in the in state there. there. So we've yeah. had some history of that. Okay, some other coaches here. Cross country and track. Uh, coach Bonk has been a coach for 30 some years in our district. He came in 78 until current. He's still our, our cross country and track coach and, and has had excellent success with his teams. And the next one is, is Coach Kerberg with one of the teams that he took to state with uh, golf in 1970. And then, as I mentioned before about Coach Wolf uh, having coached probably everything, this is looking through the uh, fence at a baseball game at a daily practice. And Coach Wolf was very passionate about baseball, and you maybe remember seeing that mm -hmm. he even gave $130,000 to the Baseball Association right. to make sure that that kept going because he was, had a very strong interest in baseball. All right, um, going on, there's a picture of Edna Anderson. Yes. And what was that to symbolize? Or well, she was the honorarium that year for Girls Athletic Association. You know, before mm -hmm. we had interscholastic competition for girls, everything was more intramural based. Sure. And so 
they actually offered 15 what they called minor sports and five major, major sport competition for girls. So there was lots of things that they could participate in. And then in their senior year, they would always pick somebody who was, had symbolized the leadership, courage, service, sportsmanship, and athletic oh. ability from their class. And, sure. and she was chosen in the year that she was a senior. So. And I see some girls' athletics are coming up, uh, looks like. Actually, in Title IX, 1975 is when girls' athletics started becoming an extracurricular mm -hmm. activity. Girls' basketball, for a while, we did have a team that went to the region in 1986, and then a team that went to the state in 2007, just last year. So that's that picture that you're seeing with the girls. Sure, that it's really there. evolved over, uh, over the years. So that next picture is a girls' golf team that Ron Kalheim coached, and, and he uh, took the team to the state in 1992 with them. Pretty successful. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Hey, okay, thank you. Thank you for watching. This is Lenny Tweeden for our story from out of the past. This is Lenny Tweeden for This is Our Story from Out of the Past. Today we're in the schoolroom of the Pioneer Museum. I'm going to visit with Helen Gould and uh, she's going to tell us about the history of the Fairmont Public Schools. And uh, Helen, tell us a little bit about yourself first. Okay, um, as you said, my name is Helen Gould and I, I'm born in Fairmont. I graduated from Fairmont High School. I've been serving on the Fairmont School Board for about 26 years. so. I have a very strong interest in our school system. And you should have pretty good knowledge about uh, public schools. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay. We're going to take a look at some pictures. It looks like we see some pictures of some of the administrators. Right. And it's, it's, just, it's just a few, a selection of some not meant to be any particular sure. meaning uh, more famous or not. But the first one is um, Superintendent Town, who served here in the 30s. And the next one is George Eddy, who was here in the 50s. And then you will see Cap Hegdahl, who was here in this, uh, Cap Hegdahl was the principal. He's on the right side of that picture. And Les Bauman, who was the superintendent on the left side. And, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he is the superintendent. And then someone who many people do remember is um, Jack LaFour, who was a principal here from in the 30s to the 60s. So he was a longtime principal. Sure. Uh, and then in the 90s, you will see these two photos. The one on the left is Ralph Miller, who was superintendent, and Todd McCormick, who was a principal at the high school. Yeah, they look good. Academic competition, it's interesting because we used to only have athletic competition. Mm -hmm. And then they started to realize that there was no reason they couldn't have some competition with academic areas also. And so things like Math League has been started, um, economic challenge teams, knowledge bowl teams. Um, so the first, and, and speech also, I really consider speech in the academic area too, rather than mm -hmm. an athletic area, and speech has been very strong. And that first picture is of uh, Cliff Janke, who has been the speech <clears throat> coach for many years and has taken many people to state uh, also with that. And the particular picture is from 1987. And then um, the Knowledge Bowl also has had good success. The Math League has had good success. Well, that economics computer. challenge, that was uh, extremely successful, was it not? That was a very special year. We had some outstanding students, and, and uh, Lauren Dunham has been a coach both in that area and in the Knowledge Bowl area and has done an outstanding job preparing these students. But they not only won locally, regionally, state, and went to the nationals, and they also uh, one out there they were so they did very well and they each received a thousand dollar savings bond really? because it was mm -hmm. actually sponsored by business you know mm -hmm. this economic challenge so where most of our other competitions don't have that kind sure. of prizes that go with it but so and they had an all expense paid trip you know to New York and got to see all the sites and mm -hmm. Wall Street and all those kinds of things that you know happened out there. It's a real honor for Fairmont. It was. The Fairmont School System. They were excellent. Matt Small, Ben Johnson, Chris Walker, Ashley Chipman, and Eric Ebert were on that team, and mm -hmm. it was very outstanding. So we're very proud of not only the the athletic and the arts, as we talked about before, with the bands and choirs and plays um, that have been a strong 
extra that we offer yeah. in Fearman, but also now with the academic competition and athletic competitions. Sure. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Okay, thank you. Thank you for watching. This is Lenny Tweeden for our story from out of the past.